tell me uh, very briefly what is the work that you received the Fields Medal for? I've been working for, since the beginning in my career, and still now it's the Zorro Lenglands programs. So Lenglands program is a, a grand program that connected uh, number theory, um, a representation theory of Lie groups, and algebra geometries. So that are quite unrelated area, especially between Lie groups, the representation that's more uh, trade with uh, analysis, and number theory, algebra geometry is more, more, more like um, algebra feelings. And um, in the beginning of the 1970s, Robert Langlands, a Canadian mathematician, has come up with a, a great vision how those things are connected in very general but very precise way. And also devise many tools to how, as how to approach, how to, how one may want to prove these conditions. So many things have been improved, although there's many progress has been made. So in these programs, um, uh, there are many conditions, but there's one of the very quite mysterious conditions that has tend uh, stand against the uh, attempt of the mathematician for a very long time on a fundamental lemma. So that they are less abstract, they are pretty concrete, those that mean that they term integrons, in how many analysis of Lie groups that are uh, uh, some con uh, integral when you compute the integrons over some conjugacy class in Lie groups. And those integrals appear to be equal for for when you do com compute in two different groups. Uh, the, the different groups seem to live in a completely different um, place and no way to connect at them, but those numbers appear to be equal. They are predicted by some larger programs. And also they play a very crucial role, roles if you de develop Langlands program. And that's what I, uh, I've been working on for a very long time. I managed to prove that kind of choice of Langlands. And, uh, I think that was the, the work for which I was awarded the Finns Medal. That was called the Fundamental Lemma. And how did you get interested in that work? I think I'm very right from the beginning. So I, when I uh, did my PhD, uh, my advisor proposed me some uh, something related to the Fundamental Lemma. I think it less maybe less difficult, uh, but the, the similar kind of identities, mysterious identities. And at that time, from when I was very young, I, with my advisor, I, I, I was uh, able to uh, come up with an entirely new way to prove such kind of identities. It was, uh, at that time, we were very far off from the, from the big fundamental element, so to speak. But I think from the very beginning that I, uh, I was interested, I was aiming at the, uh, the great fundamental element of Langlands. But, you know, from this, when you scout from from where I start my PhD to when I complete the work, the, the whole work, it take me like 15 years. 15 years. Yeah, but of course I did, I did other things in the meantime. You mentioned your advisor. Um, did that person have a big influence you on Jenner? Oh, of course, yeah. He had a big, I think he's one of the best advisors of the world. His name is Gérard Lomo, and one of the few people who have uh, two PhD students who have been awarded by Fritz Fins Medons. Oh, who's the other one? Uh, Laurent Lafont. Oh, wonderful. So, how did how did he inspire you? What was his style? First one, he was very um, uh, he was very available as an advisor. So, uh, he, he would meet with his students every week to again come to and he spent like one or two hours in, uh, per week for many years. And uh, for me, he was a great, great help uh, at, the, at the beginning as well as afterwards. Um, so, um, actually, it, uh, it's hard to believe, but, but when, I, when I was an undergraduate student, uh, I wasn't very happy with mathematics. So before that, I was in high school, I was doing great in the IMO, I have uh, good Problems, uh, problem solver schemes. I, I, I like tricky problem, and uh, I was pretty fast in doing that. 
But then I came up with university was more advanced, you know, more abstract. I didn't find, you know, I didn't enjoy it very much. I didn't, I think maybe I, I could do, I could pass the exam with maybe a good grade, but I, I feel I didn't understand it. And it become more and more painful when you, when you go further. Because you don't understand, you do something you don't really understand. And that was it, Gérald Lomont who helped me at the end, you know, to how to connect the, um, what is abstract, what is, you know, this view, you know, this abstract beauty with more concrete numbers. And uh, I enjoy very much working with that. And then that's how I, I, I it's really because of him that I could um, connect uh, what is abstract and what is more in my nature is doing for me more concrete. Yeah. Now you mentioned that the work took you 15 years and uh, you had difficulty at the beginning. How do you approach difficulties? How, what, what advice would you give to young laureates here, for example, if they face similar problems? Well, I, I would say that there's no uh, you know, recipe to how to face difficulties. Everybody has to face difficulties and maybe different ways, but... Uh, uh, well, I mean, it, it, when it, the difficulty is great, it takes time. There's no way to allow it, and you be patient, and... Um, well, at the beginning, I guess, you don't even know what the difficulty is, right? You just don't know how to do it. But uh, after a while, uh, of course, after some kind of having some very good general ideas, uh, the general direction where to go, there's some point when the problem is very difficult, you're facing some kind of big stumbling block, you know how to circumvent it or go and jump over it. And, and to try to sit there I and mean, to, to walk that mountain and, and and after I, well, you may be never able to to uh, to overcome the difficulties, but sometimes you can. You know, maybe with um, you know, really, really be aware of what the difficulty is. And after time, you, either you may figure out by your own the the way to go around or with um, with time, with learning more more mathematics ideas of other people's that connect to that 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 will help yeah. mm. now how many of these hlfs have you been to this is my third time in yeah. what sort of questions do you find that people come up that young researchers come up and ask you and how do you how do you respond to them so actually i have less interaction with the um, uh, this time I came kind of late. I, I just, you know, I, I came yesterday and just uh, showed today. Haven't have interacted with you know, part participant yet. Um, uh, but um, so last time I had more interaction. I had give uh, one lectures, plenary lectures, and also enjoy very much the a visit to some German high school and. Uh, you know, talking about math to to high school students was very enjoyable. Yes, and well, perhaps just thinking about your own your own students and people who you advise. Um, how do you when when they face similar problems to what you had? What sort of advice do you give? Um, Besides, give it time and try to find other perspectives. Do you, do you find that there's there's a uh, how much I I guess the question is how much is math and how much is personal? Well, I, I guess both. I mean, there's no. Uh, uh, I think you need perspective, perspective, and they need a lot of head-on calculation. I only advise my students to try to to set up um, a particular cases, um, some situations. You need to take time to set up things in the in the as nice as possible, so that they can do calculations. So they can perform some calculation that reveals what is the difficulties. 
it's very important to be aware of what the difficulty is. You know, when you and if you don't do the setup carefully, the 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 main difficulties, the the true difficulties, is somehow it can be hidden by all the accessories. You know, you get messed mess up by by you know non-essential difficulties. You don't know how, how to do it, but so that is very. It's like, I mean, it's, it's pure mathematics, but you have to do some kind of experiments. And it's very important how you set up your experiment right, so that, so to be aware of the difficulties. Yes. It sounds like what you're saying, if I could rephrase it, is um, finding the answer isn't as difficult as posing the question. Well, I mean, it's come, of course, but it's come, it doesn't come like this, you know, in one grand sentence, but there's many different steps and I mean the nature, I guess it's complex and uh, every time you need to uh, to figure out the, the small part of the pictures and how they could, to, uh, how they co combine together and um, I think in mathematics there's a different stage doing it, right? I mean in, math in pure mathematics you focus on in proof, so you want to prove the theorem how to come up with some rigorous proof, like in you know in modeling in, in Euclid elements, right? That may be short or maybe very long, very elaborate. But it's very it's not very usual that you come up right away with the proof. I mean, even that is not not so interesting problem. Just by mere logic, you can come up with this kind of proof from the point A to the point B. But um, the more interesting point is you need to understand what the phenomenon is. You know what what, the, what is the phenomenon? What we are talking about, and, and what the right language to talk about it. The right language help you the same way to set up. You know how how to to how to face directly with the the main difficulties and leave aside on the on the exterior perturbations and. Um, and in order to, to come up with the right language, right approach, you need to, to do a lot of experiments, you know, to, to set up in some simpler situations. Uh, and uh, and that's what I, I, I said about how it's come to be aware of the difficulties. And then and just after that, then you can, you can uh, try to construct an argument. Uh, test the arguments again on the on the cases that you have constructed and you are um, familiar with, and then after many of that, you can construct some kind of formal proof that can be published somehow. But uh, but that's a pity that um, the end result somehow uh, doesn't uh, contain on the step by which you have come up to it. And something that may be more interesting also, but uh, that's why we cannot publish everything. <laughs> um, changing changing uh, um, topics just a little bit, but staying on talking about the, the young researchers, um, you received your Fields Medal in 2010, I think, yes? That's right. Um, and so the people here are a fair bit younger. No. Many of the laureates are quite a bit older than you, of course, so there's not as much distance, but um, still it's been a while since you were in their position. Mm -hmm. How do you think your field has changed since you, uh, since you were in their position? Uh, I, I think that the, uh, the, the fields have changed a lot and they make a tremendous progress. So what used to be the focus in, in, um, in my field research has changed has changed and um, come up with new people, new ideas, new perspective. I think the, the you know the, the big the big vision where I want to go ahead and change. But the the method as well as you know, how to approach it, you know, what kind of language you should use, what kind of tunes, uh, that have changed a lot, yes. Do you think that uh there are challenges in your field that are uh, especially interesting for young researchers today? Well, I think so. There's many... Um, 
uh, that I think that how this you know, forum is um, is so ben it can be very beneficial. So, I mean, abstract mathematics and actually the field where I'm working on it, it can have this, this reputation of being quite uh, not so accessible. That uh, you know, students had to work years and years before even to start to working on a problem, you know, to 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 grasp, have a grasp on problem, to accumulate knowledge, and um, but somehow it is. It's true in one side, but it's also true that many of the very basic problems, very important problems, can be stated, stated at least in in a way, um, in a simple way. You know, people can understand the statement of problem, uh, but of course, but that, I think that gives enough motivation to 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 start. But then after that, hard work has to begin you know, to accumulate knowledge and learning you know, mathematics in order to try to do something with this, those big questions. But the big questions themselves are usually relatively easy to state. I mean, not, not completely easy, but it can be, it can be done. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Anything else that you care to add, either about um, the forum or about uh, Perhaps advice to young researchers or anything like that. Well, I'm I'm um, uh, I'm very much in. Um, uh, um, I am grateful to the uh, to the um, Highland Laureate Forum to bring over on the young scientists from over the world. I think it's science is the um, humanistic and leaders. Um, by excellence, somehow, and it has some kind of universal vocations. And I'm very glad that many young people from uh, different continents could come here to interact with, Nobel, with you know, Finns and uh, Turing and other laureate, and to, you know, can, can, can get exposed to what is the most basic and important problem in different Finns, and get some inspiration to, to start the, the long road. Uh, uh, in science. That seems like a good closing statement, so, so thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you, Tom.